All right, so today is no different. We're gonna jump into uh, a deep discussion with Avalanche and one of the favorite guests of our show. A lot of you guys always ask about uh, John Wu, who is the president and uh, over at Ava Labs. So great to have you back on the show, John. Paul, it's wonderful to uh, be here and talk to you again. Yeah, we're gonna get into Avalanche and what you guys have been doing around Ava Labs and I think a lot of it, you know, from a new standpoint, everybody is is talking about the AWS partnership, uh, what that might look like, et cetera. But you've got a lot of other things happening. So we're going to drill down into a lot of that stuff uh, today. Let's get into the first area of uh, discussion, and that is Amazon. All right. So when you look at, many people will say, okay, first I want you to explain, and we're going to show something on screen in a second, explain what this means to Avalanche uh, around these node and these validator uh, applications within the AWS system. I'm just going to jump to their website. This is a good example of the Avalanche validator node. What does this mean for you guys? Give me kind of the rundown. Well, first of all, a lot of the stuff we will talk about today will probably thematically fit into um, something that we we think is very important for the whole crypto and blockchain space in terms of more adoption. And that is okay. making things easily accessible and seamless to the end user. Paul, you and I have talked about in the past where a lot of the um, usability, the UXs and UI in the space has, have been a little bit clunky, maybe not for a crypto native who's used to that type of, and style, but to create more adoption from a traditional user, you need easy access and seamless experiences. Right. Amazon obviously is great and has figured that out. What it means for us in this partnership is that obviously it fits into that theme of creating easy accessibility uh, and seamless use, but it means more than that. It's Avalanche and Amazon Web Services. It's validation of the innovative technology that is Avalanche. And on top of that, um, it shows that a player like AWS is interested in creating an intricate relationship with a blockchain like Avalanche because they have end customers in AWS that want to develop and deploy on Avalanche. So yeah. we are gonna be supported in joint um, funding like credits as well as investing for new startups. Uh, both mm -hmm. sides will be contributing. And we will also be working um, with uh, you know partners that Amazon Web Services are going to introduce us. It's almost like an extension of business development for us. So it's really a, a, a great partnership with resources all over Amazon Web Services being dedicated to help out Avalanche. And it's a it's a great huge announcement. All right. So I think from the aspect of what we've seen, you know, we get a lot of uh, feedback from our Twitter feed. People will respond on when we did a big show last week on this partnership. And one of the things that I look at is, you know, what does this mean for the bigger ecosystem? You and I, yes, you're exactly right. We've talked about this Web 2 to Web 3 conversion. How do we get current tech stacks to make it over into Web 3? The easier, you know, solution that's out there, I think, wins. Um, and you and I have talked about that at depth. What I want to go to here is an example. These are just some uh, general uh, blockchains and validator nodes that are available over on AWS. What makes the AWS Avalanche partnership different than what some of those validator node tool sets that are already in place on AWS, what makes it so different than that? Absolutely. So most of those, and even if you want to validate on Avalanche right now on AWS before this partnership, um, there are a handful of things that you would have to do. And it's not so intuitive to the average user. Maybe it's easier for a crypto native. I mean, first of all, uh, to, to do a validation on any of those that you just highlighted, the task you have to do, you have to go figure out what's the right EC2 instance, the Elastic Computing, uh, Cloud Computing instance in in Amazon. You have to right size the disk space for the amount of storage you need. And basically you have to sometimes write scripts. And on top of that, if there's an upgrade to the Avalanche chain, you have to constantly manage that and make it okay. better. So this partnership actually is the first step in many other things as well. And in a few months time, instead of having to do all of that yourself, 
it's almost like a managed hosted service where mm. Amazon will do all of those things I just announced, uh, uh, stated for you. That literally truly will be kind of like a one click solution and really streamlining it. Um, and I believe we'll be one of the first, if not the first one to have it totally streamlined like that. So I think that first of all, that's a really good explanation because you're exactly right to spin up you know, a validator, but more, more importantly, when you spin up onto AWS, there's usually a lot of technical steps that require a lot of AT, IT departments from around the industries. And it, you can talk about food, retail, fact, you name the industry, they're all facing these kind of challenges, especially when you talk about databases and the ability to host something like what we're talking about for Web3 out there. So if you're making it so simple and so easy for these Web2 companies to truly jump in, I think that is truly a killer app for, for sure. With that being the case, John, do you find the or worry about the idea that centralization could be the new moniker of some people looking at Avalanche as the ecosystem, especially as you migrate masses from you know tr the traditional Web two environment over to Web three? Are you worried about decentralization or centralization at all? I mean, that's a very insightful question, obviously, from someone who knows technology and knows uh, the blockchain space uh, very well, because most people won't think of that. So in the very, just like you show on that screen where ultimately in the long run, Amazon's not gonna be a one chain company, they will be chain agnostic over time. Obviously, mm -hmm. Ava Labs and Avalanche will also be cloud and agnostic and provide um, other alternatives as well. But I think right now, it's clear that Amazon has seen a demand at Ava Labs slash Avalanche to chain and wants to take a leading position to help us grow that ecosystem and partners in that ecosystem. Yeah, that's good. And I think the, the key here again goes back to the whole, and this is something I argued the other day on our own show about what this partnership meant. And some people looked at it and said, all right, this is just a pumped up partnership. There's really nothing special. You just explained what is special about it. And I think those are the things that, and it, it kind of goes with the theme that you guys have been talking about, making it easy for Web2 to truly, truly transcend into Web3. And I think with that, I, well, I, think I would also one, uh, invite all the people who are, I would also invite people who are skeptical to mm -hmm. actually read through the details of the partnership. It'll probably be a lot different from a lot of the other partnerships where the uh, the crypto or blockchain company is more of a customer of Avalanche uh, of, of Amazon right. Web Services. In this case, there's resources being deployed on both sides. In fact, um, some would argue more from Amazon than from Avalanche and Avalabs. Yeah, this was just some of the uh, the topics that were in this piece over here from Coin Telegraph uh, on the partnership. Could it expand the pie for blockchain? Which I I agree with you. I think this is, and I'm very bullish on. Avalanche. I was actually, John, since you and I have talked, it's been probably six or eight months uh, since our last interview, and I was worried that Avalanche was getting too complacent. And now you guys have started to roll out with so many different things. It seems like you've been uh, sandbagging a little bit here <laughs> with everything that you're doing. So, I can assure you, uh, our founder, Eamon Gunsir, does not let anyone in this firm uh, be complacent. <laughs> Sandbag. We, we, we run at breakneck speeds. Uh, sometimes to the detriment of our own health, I think. But um, yeah. no, we're definitely not complacent. But again, when you want a, a proper partnership and you want to iron out details and there's proper tech vetting on both sides, you know, you've been in tech for a long time, Paul. You've covered companies, you've written about companies. You know, like these partnerships actually take sales cycles that are far more than a sure. typical crypto um, sales cycle. So sometimes yeah. it takes longer. And also, you know, we wanted to announce some of these partnerships when they were already happening and real and on the come, as opposed to mm -hmm. a very down the road. And not to say that this partnership doesn't have many other things down the road, like one click subnets or blockchain as a service of one click. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to, to discuss that later on a roadmap and stuff like that. But um, but l this is happening. It's real. It's here today. Let's get into a few of those things. Retail, let's talk about the Shopify and Venly integration. Um, when, you, when you look at what, um, let's go to the Venly page here. This is kind of an example. This is the thing I, I'm kind of curious about, because obviously you can do this with Polygon and, and the Avalanche uh, component here. 
But with you, with Shopify, it does seem to be, I look at it two ways. It does seem to be addressing a new market sector because these are people that probably are not going to do NFTs. They're not going to be an NFT creator over on OpenSea most of the time. But at the same time, you're also using it in an, in an ecosystem that's almost like, all right, we're, we're growing another ecosystem over here as opposed to OpenSea or Magic Eden or something like that. Do you feel like that is just a transition that we're going to see more marketplaces starting to build out in these Web2 style companies versus those marketplaces navigating over to current Web3 style companies like a Magic Eden or an OpenSea? I think there will be two markets and both will exist um, for players like Shopify. Uh, I think they have enough user interest and demand from their customers that they can create their own marketplace when they want mm -hmm. to. Um, but for smaller companies that want to create, to be part of a bigger ecosystem, the Web3 marketplaces and the Web3 um, you know, solutions are actually very good for them There's because there's already lift off in some of those places. You know, yeah. our uh, partnership through Venly with Shopify, again, is the beginning of a hopefully a far greater uh, overall user experience, same thematic, making it easy. We are one of a few that are supported by Venly with other NFTs. But I think, again, when you when this partnership has really played itself out, you'll see that some of the things that, you know, Ava Labs is building will make the Shopify experience of, of minting NFTs through Venly much easier than some of the other um, tokens or, or yeah. blockchains that's on if Shopify. You, yeah. For sure. If you look at the NFT mentor there on, on Vinley, uh, with Vinley on the app store for Shopify, I look at this and I think, okay, maybe this is early stage and it most likely, I mean, yes, it is early stage. So we'll probably start to see costs come down on this and get to the point where, you know, maybe new people who are looking at to get into NFTs for the very first time, those cost justifications are going to be real because you look at that versus the other competitor out there, if someone did want to step into it and say, okay, I'm going to go over here and launch on OpenSea or I'm going to go over and launch on you know, Magic Eden or wherever that might be. Point be, being is that at some point there is going to be a, a cost validation threshold that, that the rest of the market is going to meet. Do you think those kinds of things are just going to adjust as demand starts to roll in? I do. I do believe that they will adjust like all of uh you know, I guess your question is basically, are, are companies not uh, making enough money from the transactions of these, right. uh, you know, minting and, and funding it at a loss? I do think a lot of that will be adjusted. Um, you know, what blockchain ultimately promises to do is actually create more efficient workflow and cut out a lot of intermediaries. Um, the issue with intermediaries right now is they're necessary for various reasons because a clunky system, clunky front end that don't back, uh, that don't work out with the back end and all of these other reasons. Um, but over time, as you remove those, improve workflow, automate the workflow, um, it's going to be a, a more cost effective solution for sure. And a lot yeah. of our partnership with Shopify to the user maybe just on the front end, but there's gonna be a lot of work on the back end that makes it seamless again um, to, the, to, to, the, to the merchant. The, right. Shopify has millions of merchants. And if the merchants want to mint NFTs through the Avalanche uh, and Venly partnership on, on Shopify, it'll have a very good experience. And some of that comes from the back end stuff that Ava Labs is working on. Yeah, that, see, that to me is the kind of a sleeper app that could be a really killer util, utility because you're looking at the number of retailers out there. And, the, and it's kind of like the ocean versus the island, you know, concept around these. Where do you want to be? You want to be in the ocean with all these retailers, give them an app that they can utilize, integrate that and get their feet wet in NFTs because that usually starts the process and they go down the rabbit hole. And then before you know it, now we understand how NFTs are being integrated into retail. So I get what, you, what you're doing there. So I would uh, kudos to you guys over at, at uh, Ava Labs and Avalanche that have really kind of figured that out. Because I think that's, you've done it with, with um, AWS. That brings in, you know, Web2 and the IT groups along with people that need to transcend into Web3. And then now with retail. Uh, very cool. We're going to talk about gaming and NFT before we get uh, started. Before we go out to gaming and NFTs, you, you hit on yep. some great points again, showing your uh, research and your insight. Uh, I think when you look back at some of this stuff and 
part of the goals of many blockchain or crypto companies is to create quote unquote mass adoption, the next right. billion users or the next mm -hmm. trillion dollars of assets on chain. I think everyone focuses heavily on creating that killer app, like the email for Web3. Sure. Um, blockchain is a distributed ledger. It's Web3 in the sense it's built on top of the existing internet. So maybe there's another way to bring in the next billion users, and that is to partner with Web2 companies that mm -hmm. have access to and the distribution to those billion users already. Yeah, for sure. I think that's your secret weapon. We've talked about it many times before. You know, Avalanche is the one chain that I would say has that kind of understanding and the need where many chains are looking at trying to just regrow the poppy fields in brand new ground versus looking at all this legacy that needs to transcend into Web3 in the future. So I want to thank our sponsor today, and that is Coin Ledger. You guys are getting ready for your taxes right now and dealing with crypto nightmare. You've got exchanges, you've got DEXs, you've got all sorts of things around things like bot investing. All of that happens and creates more and more work for you. The way to do this very simply and easily is get into Coin Ledger. It's one of the best software solutions out there. And if you take a look at what they're doing in terms of integrations, let me just jump over to that for you guys. You can kind of see that they have pretty much everything. You can see the breakdown here on wallets, DeFi's, and exchanges, but you can see here, let me go over here to wallets here just to give you an idea. You're, you've got a MetaMask account, maybe a Trust Wallet, uh, maybe you're on Trezor, or you're over on the Ether Wallet, or even on Ledger. All of that can be integrated directly into your Coin Ledger account, makes it very simple for you to get your taxes done and be able to present this to your CPA in a really easy way. So make sure and just visit coinledger.io and uh, use our link below and help the channel out. All right, we're here with uh, John Wu, and um, I wanna get into something else with you, John, and that is banking. I know it's not necessarily a, a dead target, but what I'm interested in is how Avalanche is advancing self-custody. And you look at self-custody around the mm -hmm. industry, and I just want your opinion on this. You know, the recent uh, scenario that we faced here is things like, you know, this is you know a little bit on Wall Street. Um, this whole issue with Zelle, and Bank of America, absolute uh, just destruction of digital payments, which are transacted through banking systems right now, which blockchain will fix. So my question to you is, is Avalanche working on any kind of self-custody solution or anything that would maybe enable movement in that space in the future? So the answer is yes. Um, custody comes in many, many forms. So are you custody? It depends on the type of asset you're custodying. And there are difficulties with that, whether it's a, a currency, a commodity, or a security, or a collectible. These are all different forms of custody. And fortunately or unfortunately, there are rules and regulations around each one of these types of assets that need to be custody. So um, it's a far more complicated answer uh, than a simple, you know, um, a one-liner that's it's almost impossible to do that but given what's happened in the space recently i think the way the world will play out broadly speaking regardless of the call it uh, asset type is that you will have again parallel worlds existing the crypto native ethos which people believe you're uh, not your money unless it's your keys and yeah. true coal wallets uh self-custody but there will also be players, crossover players more likely, that want a white glove service and want custody out of their hands and want more of the experience of a Schwab account or something right. and have that comfort that someone um, is doing it for them and will provide insurance for them mm -hmm. and have some sort of a, you know, regulatory compliant way of doing it so that they don't have to worry about it and they'll be happy to pay uh, a higher fee for that. So I think there will be two broadly speaking, types of solutions with uh, derivations of it based on the type of asset class. And I can tell you, um, we are thinking about all of those and doing it in a regulatory compliant way every single mm -hmm. day. 
Yeah, I think you hit on a couple of things there is, you know, everybody has, has been asking what's going to be the Web3 banking solution? You know, what is custody going to look like? I mean, essentially, that's how the banking industry was built is people didn't want to hold their own cash. So it was the custody aspect of it for the security uh, element that most of the population typically does address. I, I do a class on the weekends for high net worth individuals, and this is always one of the biggest questions is how do I custody this? and in a way that's secure, but at the same time, you know, I've got some assistance. So I think you might be onto something. And we're seeing a few solutions that are starting to get into the white glove service. Uh, we've seen this in Bitcoin, we've seen this in Ethereum, and some other applications out there in the, in the layer ones that are starting to try to move in this direction. So I would agree with you. Let's jump over to gaming and NFTs. And a, a lot of movement, you guys have obviously been very active in this space. Um, this AWS partnership, does it benefit gaming or will it, is this a little bit unrelated or will there be some connective uh, tissue there uh, between what you've done with AWS and gaming? Absolutely. I think it was actually a, a big catalyst, if anything. There mm -hmm. are a lot of uh, AAA publisher gaming companies that are already right. using AWS that have built a lot of their tech stack in AWS already and they wanted to come uh, call it cross the chasm and also build out web3 solutions so um, this is one of the areas that you know um, aws saw great synergies where they can recommend um, you know a, a blockchain like avalanche and the sub network concept which is blockchain as a service of avalanche and then you know provide their customers ease of use, access, seamless into rolling up their own, call it application specific blockchain. So definitely for sure, this is a huge catalyst for this whole deal. And there are already um, intros being made for new companies into ultimately what I call one click subnet, which will be right. you know, again down the road, but super exciting and for sure. I was extremely um, bullish on this situation right here that was launched. I'm just go to this tweet here by Ledger, uh, taking a tour on on Cometh, uh, which is a Web3 you know game studio uh, focused in again on this, and again tied into the potential use of Avalanche uh, in the future. And if we see more and more of that, especially around devices, you know, I know the One Inch News just came out today of their new device. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of movement in this space. And I want to stay on the gaming sector right now because this could really open up some interesting aspects for NFTs and all that. When you look at the growth of that and then you tie it into a potential device uh, down the road, like what Ledger has done maybe with an app ecosystem, I'm thinking almost like iTunes mm -hmm. and Apple-esque mm -hmm. elements. Why wouldn't Avalanche jump into this game and do something like that? So um, you're referring to the core Ledger agreement Core yep. is the, uh, call it the hot wallet that's being created mm -hmm. at Ava Labs. It's, 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 I can't, I would encourage all your uh, users to try out Core. I mean, it is, think, it's, think of it as MetaMask, but has functionality and ease of use again and seamless activity um, so that you can transfer and move and exchange various assets from multi chain all in one easy to use. Um, interface. It's almost like your right. personal dashboard or command center. So, but again, like when you have that, one of the solutions inside of that core wallet will be, you know, besides the ease of use, will be how do you custody this stuff? Yeah, so, right. that partnership with Ledger allows people to have, a, again, behind the scenes, back end, there's a lot of work, make it very easy for them to use core and also have a cold wallet solution if that's what they desire or they can keep it on the hot wallet. So um, gr again, great uh, uh, insight there, and, and thank you for picking that up. Okay, so I'm showing Core on the, on the screen right now, and to me, this feels and looks like, when we've dove into it, a lot like Ledger Live, in essence. It's like Avalanche's Ledger Live you know, solution. And I look at it and I think, gosh, I wonder if Avalanche is taking a look at, do we go to the hardware wallet? route. I mean, Stacks is innovating uh, with Ledger on what they're trying to do over there. You've got now one inch in the game with a new hardware wallet, very similar with that e-ink. And I think, wait a minute, could an L1 do this, and especially with the fact of what you've done here with Core? What's, uh, what's the idea behind that? 
if there is well, an I mean, idea. Listen, <laughs> the first thing is always we what we do is we always listen to our community. And anything we do is because, you know, there's a decent part of our community who wants something to happen. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of the partnership with Ledger, you know, they have significant expertise and advantages of doing certain things. Sure. If, there's no reason for necessary for us to build in the cold solution. Um, but it's sometimes it's better to partner with people and create a one right. seamless experience. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because, John, there is a big move right now, obviously, in the crypto native space for self-custody. My question, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to the industry and, you know, into a lot because we I've, in the last few months, I've probably talked to a thousand different high net worth guys and and they're all asking the same question. Are banks going to do this? Are we going to see movement in some of the securities uh, companies that are out there managing this? And if they are, will I need these kinds of solutions to help manage my assets in the future? Not, you know, right now it's so early in the space, but I think your partnership uh, and your idea behind what's happening with Ledger could really kind of bridge the gap between the two. Because I think two markets at some point do meet uh, overall. I want to jump over to... They will have to. There will be creative solutions where you can be uh, regulatory compliant and yet exactly. still have a hard wallet solution. And I, I know yeah. what you're alluding to. I don't want to say things that are not happening just yet, but that's definitely on the roadmap. Yeah, interesting. Uh, all right, the Blizzard uh, Ecosystem Fund, you guys have a lot going on with these funds. Um, you have the Avatar Fund out here as well. Any news on that? We'll talk a little bit about roadmap with these eco, because this is where all your builders are going to come from. It's also where a, a lot of innovation is going to come from. So can you talk to me about what is on the roadmap there with those two funds? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're not only asking that question, so is Amazon. So, you know, part of that deal with Amazon is, um, you know, when Blizzard funds a new project, Amazon will also uh, contribute $100,000 of credit for AWS services. And okay. then, you know, obviously, Amazon will also introduce new uh, companies who want to start up. And then hopefully, Blizzard will also invest in those companies or, you know, Avatar will help contribute. So the areas that are very exciting right now in Blizzard for us, no doubt, gaming is very important. It matches up nicely with what we're seeing out there, a great use case for the subnets. The reason why we have, uh, I would say, five live subnets and a lot of them have gaming related aspects to it but there is literally a hundred subnets in the pipeline um, that will be deployed over the course of this year if not more um, and those are all, all not all sorry a lot of them have a very gaming component to it right you know the benefits of the subnet again is that they can create their own execution environment gaming companies need um, a different type of environment than a uh, a token exchanged for securities uh, type right. of environment, we call it. Yeah. And they want high throughput, high transaction processing speed. So um, they want different things. And, and so far, it's been a boom for them to be able to spin up their, call it application as a service or blockchain as a service, so they don't have to worry about the underlying infrastructure and they can focus just on the development of the game and acquiring users. Yeah. John, we have seen um, in the NFT space a little bit of a Wild West going on right now. You've got scenarios happening over with Magic Eden, obviously with OpenSea, now Yuga Labs. I want to jump over to the story from Yuga Labs. And what they're trying to do is trying to develop these almost like a framework, you know, or a template, so to speak, for NFT, whether it's support royalties, because they're talking about now making it to where this is a new standard. Is Avalanche working on an NFT standard right now of what might be published at least for the L1 or the Layer 1 for, uh, for Avalanche in terms of NFT standards? Well, very first off, we're a technology company, so we'll be agnostic to which business model plays itself out. We're definitely talking to various constituents that are creating standards. Our goal is to, uh, whatever standard happens, um, have flexible enough technology in order to support the predominant winning standard. Um, so we're part of those discussions, but you know, our goal is not to help create the standards, but is to be mm. uh, providing the technology for whatever standard exists. Is, is, yeah, existing for what's out there. Overall, when you look at the funds that you've, you've got in action right now, gaming is a big part of that for 2023. What would you say, or can you say, how much is being kind of earmarked for gaming uh, out of these funds as we grow into more advanced Web3 gaming? I mean, I don't want to give percentages, but a decent portion of it is earmarked for gaming. 
Um, we're very active in other areas as well. Um, you know, part of not necessarily in these funds, but the overall effort and, uh, um, and resources are also allocated for real world assets. As you know, we, I think we've talked about it. Very um, happy that we're able to tokenize a slice of a KKR fund. Um, there are more of those call it real world assets that want tokenization. And we're working with those marquee players uh, in that space as well. So there's also, you know, we've been talking about NFTs. So there's also that area. So there are definitely um, various uh, places that we're earmarking spend and resources, um, but a decent portion will be going to gaming because it just fits so nicely in the early adopter of the subnets or the blockchain as a service on Avalanche. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, this was news coming out of uh, GRI, you know, Japanese game giant GRI. They're running nodes now on Polygon. So if we see more of this kind of activity, I think it goes back to your point, is Web3 gaming may start to evolve from what was Web2 gaming studios. And then you look at the solutions that are going to be needed out there. You look at the AWS partnership, the NFT integrations as we start to see retail play into this which could probably play into the gaming sector as well. Uh, it's going to be an exciting year. So, Do you feel I mean, like it's funny you mentioned GRI uh, because you know we have a partnership with GRI as well. Um, mm -hmm. And they're actually deploying a lot of their NFTs and running validator nodes for uh, Avalanche as well. Interesting. Do you think this year is uh, the year for getting, because I feel like right now everybody's been building you know, for this last year doing a lot of things just like you guys have have kind of come out with just a just a litany of just new projects new partnerships new initiatives 2023 how do you see this lining up for the year especially around web3 gaming oh that's a great question i mean there's been a lot of development people forget in 2021 and 2022 that's going to be unearthed so to speak in 2023 mm -hmm. and 2024 um, that's the benefit of you know the, the cycles the bull markets help create interest and it helped create um, new development. And now, it, obviously, it's you know what they call winter. It's less activity from one respect, but actually, there's as much activity as ever from an operator's perspective because we've built so many things that now it's time to come to market. Now, what is very heartening here uh, in this cycle is that um, similar to last cycle, but it's even better in this cycle, in my opinion. Um, you know, a lot of development in the bull or comes out in the bear market and helps create right. the next bull market because of utility. But in this case, I think this is the first cycle where there's a lot of, like you mentioned, overlap between Web 2 and Web 3, whether that be mm -hmm. in AAA publishing gaming or whether that be in financial services or even in consumer brands um, who are now using Web 3 or right. using the blockchain technology. No doubt. I think this is the this is the one that you know we even have kind of talked about this on the show quite a bit. Is that um, we feel like 2023 is going to be the coming out year for big retailers to start the you know people who have the budgets to be able to assign teams and you know the investment that's going to need to take place. It's still going to be very early stage. But I think this is the year that we start to see a lot of those kind of partnerships really develop. Obviously, we've seen Nike and what's happening with the Artifact. You've seen Disney really make a move toward Metaverse. There's a lot of play coming at us right now. Speaking of those type of, type of titans, I want to talk about Apple for a second because I still see that as a barrier to entry, especially for Web3 companies that are trying to figure out how do I get through the Apple walled garden? How are you guys uh, suggest? I mean, you got a lot of DAP developers doing this, trying to figure this out. What are you guys finding out there in the market? Right. I mean, um, I think those rules are actually changing as we speak, and it, but it's been difficult for not just Web3 developers, for a lot of different developers all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, listen, um, there's more big fish out there. Amazon, for instance, you know, um, is, you know, a, a embracing things. So Apple will be Apple and things will come along over time. And, um, but there are other big players, and as long as the overall adoption is happening, the better. Now, I know there are specific rules that make it harder for um, all developers on the Apple ecosystem, or uh, prohibitive fees, I should say. I think part of the spirit of um, Web3 is to democratize some of those fees and create a more open development environment. 
So I think um, either Apple is going to move over time or people are going to find alternatives where yeah. it is more open development. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one for sure. There's two areas that we have been tracking. We just did a big roundup on CES. I was surprised, even me, who is, you know, I'm always thinking technology is going to lead the way for everything. But I was surprised at how much advancements we had seen in the NFT space around uh, smart TVs. And, you know, this was a good example of LG and kind of what they were doing with some stuff with uh, Hedera. And with that, it starts to open up mass markets. Now you've got the TV sector, the potential opportunities there for what blockchain might bring, especially around gaming, NFTs, assets, displays. I mean, there's just so much there. Uh, anything planned, you know, when you think about roadmap going in that direction to what's happening over in the smart TV space? So um, we are um, talking to some large um, companies mostly Asian companies that are that do make hardware like you know smart TVs. I, I can't say there's anything definitive yet, but we are definitely anything that fits into the theme of easier to use, more access right. and um, and a better experience will fit into something that we will dedicate time and effort. Um, again, I, I don't want to jump the gun on anything. We're definitely having conversations with some Asian participants and maybe there'll be some stuff down the road. So John, I have an idea for you guys. And uh, this Please. comes from our, our crypto pit. We're always analyzing these kind of things. And we look at these evolutions of what's happening in technology. And to your point, I always look at the projects who are making it easier. Because those are the ones I feel like win the game. You know, if you make it easier, it, it happened in the web world. It happened in social. It happened in mobile. Everybody did the same thing. Whoever makes it simple to make it into that next level is going to win. I look at what's happening over at HTC. This is the Viveverse. And they've started this whole you know, focus, because I mean, essentially, this is going ahead of what's happening at Meta. They've already started to plug in uh, wallets, integrations. And I want to say, I'm gonna, we're going to talk with the HTC. I think we need Avalanche right here. <laughs> You'd have Ethereum, Polygon, and then you could get Avalanche in something like this. What do you think about something like that in terms of partnership? A absolutely. Um, that's something that we should definitely be talking about. Again, that fits into the theme. Um, yep. Bridging Ease the gap use. between Web 2, Web 3, easier access, better experience, seamless, and a better product. Um, but it's so easy, Paul, to talk about these things when it's like uh, to the naked eye, when it's on the surface sure. level. What I think we have to emphasize again, and what Ava Labs does so well, is the underlying deep tech. Um, you know, we're, we're mixing gaming, NFTs, and all of these things right now, like Shrapnel, which is a AAA mm -hmm. publisher. Yep. And then, and then you know, the, the goal again is one day to have one click subnet or blockchain as a service with Amazon. Now, Shrapnel is your perfect example. AAA publisher. The game is a, I think it's a shooter game where you can yes. uh, put 100 people in and then everything in the game, whether it's the, uh, uh, the shields, uh, the material, the clothing, the guns, the scope of the gun, the map inside the game, um, they will all be NFTs that can be traded and, and moved around and exchanged and on Avalanche a subnet. Now, right. why is that a great partnership with Amazon uh, Web Services? Well, because a lot of what they built already is using a lot of the AWS Web Services. So, And then suddenly when you um, do that on the subnet, not only do they get their own execution environment, the goal of one click subnet, if you were to do something like that now, um, you have to figure out, you have to choose your validators, number of validators. Then yep. you have to choose your wallet experience. You want to use Core from Avalanche or MetaMask, your RPC provider. You know, Avalanche creates a great RPC uh, interface, you know, or you can use Infura, Alchemy. Then you got to index data. Um, you know, you can use Covalent, you can use space and time, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And then you have this, you know, all of these things and choosing your VM. Suddenly with Avalanche integrated AWS and especially with um, Shrapnel will need like 200 nodes or whatever. Sure. In the yeah. old days, they would have to do each one of these nodes. And yeah. now through um, AWS, it's like you just put in 200 nodes and these choices and all Press of a sudden it's seamlessly integrated with your existing tech. That yeah. is also, you know, development and sit, fits in the theme, but the user or the developer may not necessarily see that because it's all beneath the surface. 
Um, yeah, and that's very sure. important to mention here once again. Think of it, think of that almost like a common app in college. I don't know if you have kids in the college age, mm -hmm. but when you and I apply, we had to uh, write 15 different applications <laughs> or whatever, and now they have yeah. a common app. So it's a common yeah. app example. Yeah, I think that's a good example of how most people are trying to translate what's happening at, at Avalanche, how important this AWS uh, partnership is, but more importantly, how important this is for Web3 and blockchain, because that's really the big goal, as you and I have talked about much, and that is this transition of what's existing out there in the existing tech world. Everybody's been building on this for three decades. We can't transition to mass adoption unless we create a pathway, kind of that neural net, to really make it happen and make it happen simply, easily, and in your position, just make it a beautiful experience. So I think those are the key things that you guys are definitely hitting on. John, it's always lo it's lovely uh, talking to you and always kind of like getting inside your head trying to understand what's happening over at Avalanche. So we really appreciate you stepping in today. Always appreciate your thoughtful questions as well. Thank you so much, I enjoyed it. You bet. All right, so you guys are tuned in over on the podcast side of things right now. Number one place to catch these kind of videos. Uh, when we do these deep dives with some of the project uh, teams, and we really kind of showcase a little bit of the narrative that companies are trying to do, much like what Avalanche is trying to do there, you have to understand the bigger picture. And I think that's the thing we try to do here on the show more, more so than uh, I think most shows out there. Uh, so make sure and subscribe. All you have to do is just hit the subscribe button right there. You're looking at it right now and become part of the family. Uh, if you are not part of our Diamond Cert, which is our private email group, we got a lot of changes coming this year for it and our good changes. These are gonna be a lot of new rollouts, much like some of the projects that are really been working. We've been doing a lot of that ourselves. Make sure and, and subscribe, hit the link below. If you guys wanna reach me, it is out there on Twitter, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechBath.